We're here at Lucky Landscaping in Florida with Austin. He's 21 years old and they're doing $5 million a year in their landscaping company. So let's tour the yard and go check out some properties. Hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing well. I'm here with Austin from Lucky Landscaping in Jupiter, Florida. Yes, Jupiter, Florida. What's up, dude? Uh, I think I've followed, like we've been friends on Facebook for like 10 years and this is our first time meeting. So what's going on, dude? Nice to meet you finally. Uh, this is this is crazy, dude. I, I really didn't know how incredible your story was. You guys are crushing it here. Yeah, so we're a commercial landscape firm here in uh, Jupiter, Florida, which is a a very nice place if you haven't been here. Uh, we have beautiful beaches, amazing restaurants. He's um, also a travel guide. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> no, not really, but it's an amazing place to live. Um, you know, big tourist place. So we get, we're fortunate enough to have, you know, pretty nice properties that we get to get to work on. And you guys are doing about $5 million a year with only 19 accounts, technically. Correct, so yeah, we're probably gonna do over 5 million this year in 2024. Um, we have about 19, customers which consist of HOA so in a specific HOA we may have 600 homes uh, but 19 customers I guess you could say have you always been doing that like did you used to do like a one-off property like Nancy's yard or and you just found that hey this is our niche is HOAs yeah so I think we started you know obviously like everyone else started cutting houses when I was you know eight or nine years old in my in my neighborhood and Eventually, I think when I was 15 or 16, it really started to take off when I bought my first truck. Um, and we started getting into commercial, just little commercial accounts, you know, a little condominium association. And eventually we just kind of grew it to, you know, what it is today, which is all commercial HOAs. And we've kind of found our niche of we're good at it. And we're gonna be able to go see some of those, right? Yes, we'll check some out and see some guys working. That's awesome. And so how many trucks and how many guys do you have? So we have a total of 16 trucks and about 40 employees right now in the winter time. Uh, we'll probably be pushing 50 or 60 come summer. And how old are you, dude? 21 years old. This is so wild. <laughs> Congratulations, I can't wait to hear more about it. We're gonna walk around uh, your shop here and then we're gonna go take a look at some some properties all right so I think it'd be fun if we just go around I was asking you a million questions I'm like let's turn on the camera dude we're just gonna go around tour some things at what point like when did you make a million dollars and what was the turning point because I saw you years ago just driving around a little atlas pulling a trailer and a mower so like how did it go from that to this yes yeah, so I think we uh like I, I was probably I was in high school I think as a junior and that's when I hurt, hit my first million dollars what? Um, just selling, selling, selling. Uh, and then we kind of redefined what our real goal was and who our ideal client was. And we kind of backtracked a little bit and then, you know, regrew from there. So, uh, you know, we discovered multifamily apartment complexes weren't our niche. We like higher end work, people that take pride in the appeal of their property versus just trying to meet a budget on multifamily. That's wild. And so, this was your old office you were telling me yeah so at our old facility this was our office uh, and you guys were doing millions of dollars out of oh, here oh yeah we we didn't move to this facility <laughs> until awesome, probably dude. about three million in sales so, so you a, don't need a big fancy shop to make a million dollars no, right this is a 10 by 20 we have a window it's drywalled inside and it worked perfect can we check we, it out yeah let's check it out that's awesome dude it, it i think it's good you know i i feel like everybody has this vision that you have to have some big fancy barn and shop yeah so and you now guys we are like dude we got a container man yeah so now we use it just for training um our guys come in here in the morning and meet but we had two or three desks in here we had a sales guy office manager and me all working out of here That's you awesome. know pumping three million in sales and then so, so this is you you bought this property a year ago yeah so i bought this property a year ago at six acres and we're getting ready to build a big nursery on it as well this is our key system that we use that keeps track of all of our keys um for our trucks so the very cool thing about this is we'll have the truck key on a blue pit peg all the drivers will have a peg with their key on it so the idea is that their personal key that they drove to work is on a red key uh. they plug it they put it in they twist it 
and they take our truck key. So while they have our key, we have their key. Ooh. So not only does it hold them accountable to turn our key in every day, if we have to move their car at our facility, oh. we have their key at all times. And that's the reason we do it. And what's this called? So this is called Keeper Systems. It's a very expensive board, but it's mechanical. So no subscriptions, it's a one and done cost. So yeah, there's no power or whatever. Exactly. 16 would put our key back in, twist it, and they would get that's their sweet. key back. And then of course we have them for out of service if a truck. So these are there. locked. Correct. So if we have huh. a truck key on it, you can't get it out. Interesting. That's cool, dude. Yeah. I, and, and where do you learn these organization things? These are cool. Just by touring facilities, you know. Yeah. I go and check out a lot of other companies, and uh, you get one or two pieces from every facility, and it really starts to build your infrastructure. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys have a little guide here. Yeah. What truck does which? And then you guys have fuel here on site for yeah, the so equipment we have all of our own on-site fuel we have diesel we have regular and then we have a mixed tank so this tank is 300 gallons we mix our two cycle uh gas about every 10 days we put 250 gallons of regular to five gallon bucket of two cycle oil so one and done you come you fill your can and that's it nobody's mixing except one guy at our company that's awesome. So, and then another uh, efficiency thing we did, we put all the hoses on reels. So every tank has a 50 foot hose. So when our crews get here in the afternoon, they're gonna, they take the hose out, they fill all their mowers inside the trailer. One's filling the mowers, one's filling the truck and they park their truck. So that's why we have two regular and then of course one diesel for our- So you guys fill trucks. up at the end of the day? Correct. So they'll just come in here, stop, do all that and put it yep, away? Do that, they dump their truck if they have to. Uh, and it's all about efficiencies. What's your uh, what's your gas station policy then? So we don't allow any gas stations. Morning, afternoon, lunchtime, no gas stations for our trucks. Really? Um, we have ice at our shop. We have fuel at our shop. We have the dump at our shop. Uh, there's no reason to stop at any stores for any reason. What about like, oh, I didn't bring my lunch today. Honestly, it doesn't <laughs> come up to me anymore. So yeah. it may go to the production manager, but um it does take a lot of enforcing and i think it's hard when you don't do it from the beginning yeah but now that when guys come and work for us that's just our policy it is what it is at that point. so you guys are are focused on billable time now because Correct. you have you've made the investments here to have everything at the shop and your guys aren't stopping at the gas station for an hour an hour and a half a day exactly that stuff adds up dude oh it it adds up very quickly so you know, we allow drivers to come in, clock in 15 minutes early, make sure their trucks are ready. So that way crew members can arrive at 7 a.m. and they are out of the shop. That's awesome. Um, so we try to have a couple minute rollout and same thing comes in the afternoon. We allow the driver and one other guy to fill up, dump the truck, get it all set for the next day. What was that new software thing that you're, you're implementing? So we actually, we just invested in a new system that's gonna be installed probably in about two weeks called Fuel Cloud. And what it does is every truck has a uh, number in the system and every driver has a pin. So the driver will be able to go up to the, to, the, to, to the computer, punch in their pin number, punch in what truck they're filling up, and the software will turn on the pump for that truck. So if it's a diesel truck, it's gonna turn on the diesel pump. If it's a gas truck, it's gonna turn on the gas pump. And we can also set a limit in there that they can only fill 25 gallons into that truck. So they can't fill the truck and fill their car it's gonna clock out on them. And then you were saying that for off-road fuel tax Correct. by the government, people don't know this. If you're like just <laughs> starting in your business, when you're going to buy gas at the pump and it's $3 and 30 cents or whatever, the it's, taxes are already built in. It's about a dollar a gallon in taxes for road. So um, this new software is also gonna keep track of how much fuel is going into weed whackers, edgers, blowers, mowers. If we have diesel going into a chipper, into our front end loader, it's gonna track all that. So at the end of the year, you can compile a form with the government, how many gallons you put into, you know, off-road fuel and file it with the state. So at diesel, you can buy off-road diesel. You can't buy off-road gas. So that's the reason that you have to file with the government to get that rebate. Um, and making sure you track it is important too because they will audit it. If you say all your gas is off-road, they're gonna know something's up. We also have a drum of deaf fluid as well. So we gotta put it inside, but uh, this is deaf for the diesel trucks. So we also have a dump here. So 
trucks will dump, we'll get, you know, debris from our nursery, it'll all pile up here. Uh, and we have to call a grapple truck to come and claw it out uh, twice a week. So they came today, that's why it's a mess right now. Uh, this is our shipping container full of storage. Um, I definitely didn't clean it up for you because I don't believe in making everything look pretty just for the <laughs> camera. Um, so you can see it's a little bit of a mess, but uh, we have extra Roundup, extra irrigation supplies, our water for the guys, um, extra tools. Um, so yeah, it's just all spare equipment, I guess, and broken stuff that has to go to a mechanic. Can you show us this barcode thing really fast? Yeah, so we got this barcode um, asset tracking system uh, that it's called Asset Tagger. We buy the barcodes from them. The, the software is free. So there's no subscription fees on that either. And you can scan it on your phone and see exactly what unit it is. So um, for example, you can scan this one and you'll be able to see exactly which unit this is. It's gonna load and we can see exactly what unit it is, serial number, where we purchased it from, the purchase date and what we paid for it, which is a great system. Uh, to know whether you should replace the unit or actually invest the money to fix it. So if the unit's two years old, I wouldn't recommend putting $200 into putting a new power head on it when you could buy a new one for three or 400 and get two years solid out of it. Yeah, because most of the time with that, you're gonna pay, you know, $150 just for the um, exactly. person to do it, yep. and the labor, right? And it also lets you know, hey, this unit's still under warranty. We bought it three months ago. Right. So it gives you a lot of good data. So What's this, just equipment not being used? Yeah, nothing pretty here. Extra pallets from mulch installs. Uh, we got our stump grinder. We got a couple of these ferris blowers. They don't work that great for our HOAs, unfortunately, that are smaller. I think for industrial, they'd work amazing. Uh, we have a couple gators. We just bought a billy goat leaf vacuum. I'm not sure how that's going to work out for us yet. Um, we, of course, got a dingo um, and a load of front end loader. So are you guys mostly mowing, tree trimming, or what, what's the majority of the business? So I'd say about 50-60% of our, our business is maintenance, mowing, hedge trimming, etc. Um, we're probably about 20% tree trimming, uh, you know, 10 or 20% on enhancement work. Um, so that's pretty much the mix of our business, but very heavy on maintenance. What is this thing used for? So we use a Kubota at the shop here, you know, move material, load trucks. Uh, we mostly use it on a job when it's mulching season. So we probably do about five or 600 pallets of mulch come October. So we use this in all of our communities to move the pallets around. Um, pallets of mulch? Yeah, so down here in Florida, we are all bagged mulch. What? So That's yeah, wild, dude. There is no bulk. Really? Yep, pallet forks and move the pallet. Good to go. I mean, it see, like if you're, if you're doing large stuff like this, I guess that seems kind of convenient, but like I just imagine a big scoop, we could just scoop a bunch of mulch, man. Yeah, so, you know, from us, when we're bidding jobs, our production rate's 20 bags an hour per man. So if we have 10 guys on a site, you know, we're getting... 200 bags an hour down and that's the ratio because of course you have one guy on a machine that's not laying any bags So you have to look at the average, but we're about 20 bags a, uh, a man hour which comes to About a yard and a half an hour. I guess if you're doing bulk. So we ordered a bunch of material It's all for upcoming jobs just a stockpile um, When you're doing a bunch of HOA stuff There's always a couple plants that die here or there and rather than trying to send guys to a nursery for you know 10 plants it really the customer ends up paying a lot of money for it. So does this get delivered here? Yeah. So this all comes directly from the growers. Gets delivered here. We pay a much lower cost than buying it local at retail, um, and it also helps a ton on our efficiencies. How much does a bag of mulch cost here? So I think we're paying about two twenty a bag or so. What would that be for per yard? Do you know? So it's thirteen and a half bags. So I guess probably about thirty bucks or so. You're a smart guy, dude. You got <laughs> He's a numbers guy, I can tell. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're paying like 25 to $30, depending it, on the, the color. The difference doesn't make up for bag or not bag. It's just what we do well, you yeah. know? What are the trailers that are sitting around here? So we've got an extra maintenance trailer. We've got a trailer that holds fertilizer. Um, they're kind of just extra. So once we get to a job site, you'll see we run all box trucks. So there's pros and cons. Obviously one of the cons is if your box truck goes down, you're not transporting equipment. 
So we have trailers in case that happens and we'll use a trailer to get our mowers and stuff to a job site. Can we briefly take a look at the office and then we'll go check out some jobs? Yeah, let's check out the office. You got some nice cones here and they just, basically at the end of the day, they just gas up and then they have a designated area yes. or it's first come in? So they all have a designated spot. Um, that'd be correct. They gas up, they dump, they park their truck and in the morning they go straight out. Um, so we have a very interesting system here. We actually, uh, we were having an issue with painting lines and they were never staying and you couldn't see the lines. Yeah. So we actually came up with this idea that we have a rope on the ground that's pinned in. And so the rope is our line now. And there's a couple stakes throughout it that pins it down and we have them all throughout here. And occasionally we'll paint the rope, but it stays rather than the yeah. rain washing all the paint right off the dirt. And then the, everybody just parks here. Correct. So I love our landscape. So we've done quite a bit here, trial and error. We've got different rocks, different colors. Um, and then of course we've got our ice bin, so it goes back to the efficiency thing is uh, we don't want people stopping at gas stations, so they have no reason to not go to gas stations, they're full of ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. How much does one of those things cost? Probably four or five grand, but yeah. it pays for itself $2 a bag at 12 crews. Well, it's that or just your labor savings yeah. sitting at a gas station with... what? So how many people are on a truck? So anywhere from typically five or six um but then we have sites where two crews will go so they'll have 12 guys on site nice this is beautiful dude yeah it came out nice i like the i just i can't imagine living palm tree life it's awesome <laughs> yeah, are these your trucks yeah so i have a work truck and a play truck <laughs> <laughs> dang that's a beautiful truck yeah but it gets muddy around here too so <laughs> the only the bad part about having a nice truck and trying to keep wheels shiny dang dude what year is this that's a 22 that is cool see if you don't have a big shop for the first few years in your business exactly you get to buy nice things hey and i drove a, i drove a when i was in high school i drove an f-250 lifted truck i thought it was super cool and then finally one day i woke up i don't need this truck so i went out i bought a ford explorer a thirty-five thousand dollar car and i grew to probably three million in the car and then i finally decided i wanted a truck again that's so wild. i bought a play truck and now of course i have a work truck that's cool what year's the work truck a 20. i bought that used dang dude are these like aftermarket yeah there's a custom uh, guy that takes them apart and paints them <laughs> that's beautiful all right this isn't a truck show but those are beautiful trucks yep. they don't matter they don't matter, so but it, it's fun to... It's a negative on the balance sheet. <laughs> it's at least fun to see, man. That's cool. Yeah. This is beautiful. Yeah, so I like trial and error, a lot of stuff. That's how I learned. I didn't go to college or school for landscape, so uh, this is Did my... you go to college at all? I didn't, just high school. Yeah. So this is my test area here. That side I don't do anything on. So this side I over fertilize. I, you know, I spray with fungicide and I'm trying to kill it and it doesn't seem to die. So <laughs> it's greener though. So as Blake says, with my numbers, truck washing is a 20 minute job, which means two people for 10 minutes or three people for seven <laughs> minutes and four people isn't needed. That's funny. So you just have a bunch of like... Yeah, so we have a bunch of signs. We're gonna put them up soon, uh, you know, but getting the point across, you know, via sign is the easiest. Where do you get these signs made? Like, I like them with your logo and stuff. Yeah, just a local company. You know, we just make them up online and uh, send them off to get printed. Nice. So is this where you work every day? Yeah, so I'm in the office every day, uh, you know, just going over the numbers, account management, you know, production. So we do it all right here. That's awesome. I've seen these on TikTok. Oh yeah, I know. I haven't hung it up yet though, so I'm already a month or two behind, but <laughs> um, yeah, I found it online. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, you have uh, office staff in here? Yeah, so we have an office manager, an account manager, um, and two production managers. So one on maintenance, one on tree trimming, and you know, they'll meet in here occasionally as well. We have a nice conference table. We can open a set of plans on here, nice and wide open. Nice. You got a little view. That's cool, dude. Yep. This is awesome. Yeah, it, you know, it's wide open. Uh, nothing can find, I guess. So 
it works good for what we need, you know, we're a small company and uh, everybody works together, you know. Yeah. I don't like job titles, so. That's awesome. Because <laughs> we have like the ones that are, are the... Uh, the cable. Wire cable. Yeah. and it's always dragging or broken, so uh, DOT, they don't like that and it's our first red flag to pull you over. So yeah. now uh, this goes on the trailer to the brake cable thing and the, the clip carabiner clip goes on the truck and it's never going to touch. No matter Where'd how you get small. that? Just Amazon, you get a pack of two. I think they were like 30 bucks. All right, so this is our conference table. We're missing a couple of chairs, but um, this is where we display our schedule on LMN, which is what we use, as well as our truck trackers, which is Samsara. And the cool thing with Samsara is, if you look at the green bubbles, uh, that's weather, so there's, I guess, some uh, rain probably coming in, and you can also see the traffic uh, lines as well, so. That's um, wild, Samsara. Yup. And you said that they have dash cams? Yeah, so this is all part of a dual facing dash cam, forward facing, and we can see inside the truck. Um, so it really, uh, you know, from a safety and a risk st standpoint, that's the reason we have it. We don't really check it, but you know, this becomes interesting when- Don't tell your guys that though. Yeah, this becomes interesting, you know, when it's four o'clock in the afternoon and say the exit's closed and you see a straight red line down the highway, you can tell your guys. So a little piece of traffic here or there, you're not gonna worry about, but if you oh. see a solid line yeah. for a big stretch where you know they're traveling, you might wanna re reroute them one way. And so does that like, is that like a subscription, like the dash cams and stuff? Yeah, so I think it's about 40 bucks a month per truck. So it is a little costly, but uh, you know, as we got bigger, it definitely become became needed. It also alerts the drivers in cab of, hey, uh, you're speeding. And so it'll talk to them while they're driving. <laughs> or it'll detect their phone. And we can also see a whole report on that specific driver of, hey, they're speeding, you know, quite a bit and it'll track how much they're speeding or, huh. or how much they're on their phone. That's awesome. And then LMN over here? Yeah, so we have LMN over here. A bunch of our jobs are all scheduled. Um, the guys will clock in, clock out, uh, and it job cost all of our jobs. So we can see in live time, you know, if we're making money, losing money, uh, and if they're going over our budgeted hours versus, you know, actuals. That's awesome. How long have you guys been in here? So probably six months, maybe eight months in here. Okay. So it's nice. a little, little upgrade from our, you know, shipping container. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. What's in here? This is just another office room. So not much. I like all the windows and doors and stuff. Yeah. This is the golf room. Yeah, so I think we're gonna move our conference table in here, do our TV in here. Nice. Um, it's kind of a little bit more private than I guess out in the open and we kind of need some more space out there for desk. This is kind of cool. They're gonna hang that up. He's the boss and at 15 he made gross 100,000 this year. That's awesome, dude. Yep, it That's was cool. an amazing time. Sunday paper. That's cool. I am totally impressed. That's wild, bro. <laughs> so, you know, you have full-time office staff in there. I think that's the side of business that is very cool, you know, because to get to that step is pretty tough. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, it's hard to like get to the point where you can afford people to go out and do the work, but then you get to a step of having office staff is- Because right, like- Very impressive, It doesn't man. generate direct revenue, but it's needed to manage the revenue. So, you know, it's, you got to manage it for sure. And you got to know your overhead staff, account managers, you know, production managers, they're not actually directly generating revenue, but they're managing the people that do generate it. What I think is crazy is to hear that you guys aren't like crazy rushed busy in there because you only have 19 accounts. You only have 19 invoices a week and right, or a, a month. I'm sorry. And right. It's like, it's all about managing problems yeah. and if you solve a problem quick it won't be a problem and so that's our biggest thing is it comes back to radius right like we focus on a tight radius now so we can put out all the fires in one day typically yeah and it's not like oh we've got we're three days behind on you know work orders that people have complained we missed their bush we didn't do this yeah we solve them quick yeah and and you found that niche that sounds pretty cool of not having to invoice. I mean, how many actual houses do you guys mow, would you say? Thousands, right? Yeah, probably five or 6,000 actual doors. So, so imagine invoicing all that, you would have a much different life. Oh yeah, it's a whole different 
aspect of it. Because the, the invoicing alone would take, I mean, yeah. a, a full on, you only have a couple of staff in there. I mean, you'd have have to have a big team to I do mean, that. I mean, yeah, and you'd just have phone calls coming in. You'd, you'd have a lot more versus right now, about 95% of the homeowners will call the property manager, which will then send it to us. If it's a complaint for us, you know, half the time it's like, that's not part of their service. So we don't even get it. So we kind of have all the property managers working for us, profiling the complaints or work orders that come in before they actually get to us. Can we go check out some properties, man? Yeah, let's go. I want to see, see these sites. trucks in action. These are our flagship trucks. Uh, we love the box trucks. They work very well for us. They're an Isuzu truck. This one's actually a Mitsubishi. This is the first one we built. Um, we've got undermount fuel tanks on them. We've got storage on the other ones and on the other side as well. So we have a mixed tank as well as a regular tank. Um, the red hose is their mix and the uh, black hose is gonna be their regular. So, and then they also they have a key to turn on the pumps. So the mix one, uh, so like you would go from that to a, a blower? Yeah, so they're going directly from their mixed fuel here and going right to the blower to fill it up. Huh. So, um, like I said, it all goes back to at the shop when we're filling our mix. Since we pre-mix it all in a large tank, they can fill it right into the 15 gallon uh, transfer tank on the truck. Gotcha. So, works pretty, pretty nice. And this is a dump. So this dumps to the side. So this is how they unload all their trash. Where do you put it in at? Uh, the other side or, yeah, the other side has a step on it. Oh, our whole fleet is all right. Um, we love efficiencies, so we use twheels. Dude, all day, um, that's awesome. I love them, they work amazing. Uh, this machine has 845 hours and look at how good that tire is still. These are the twheels? Yes. We have the, uh, the Xmark version of those. Yeah. Love them, the Tractus tires. It's amazing, I mean, this, this is like, you wonder about the future of like lawn care and that's the best place to start if you're going to invest in something it's what six seven hundred dollars a tire but like this tire has 850 hours on it we've never had a flat tire yeah. and it still probably has another thousand hours of life so we'll use this machine for three years and never replace a set of tires and you'll it. probably put those back on like I know Brian's on maintenance. He's used the Tractus for longer than me. Yeah. And I think he's put like 2,000 hours on yeah. it and it looks brand new I still. I know. And it, I mean, as long as the guys aren't running up and down pavement, it, they'll last a while. So who does the wraps and like all the brand, like it all seems to everybody's shirts and everybody, all the signs and all the trucks. Who yeah, does so that? So I love branding. It means everything to us. We use a company called Coughs around here. They do all of our truck wraps. They design them, they design the themes for everything we do. Man, these are um, beautiful. So they really, the trucks come out nice. So you said you have like, how many people working on one neighborhood? So in this neighborhood right now, we have three trucks here. Here's another truck uh, coming down the street. So. Dude, <laughs> that's wild, bro. So like when you guys are, you guys are running a neighborhood when you're in there. Yeah, so we're in here today. We have a trim crew in here. We've got two mowing crews in here. And I believe this account's a uh, two-day mow as well, so. So nobody in this neighborhood mows their own yard? Correct, we do fronts, backs, we trim all the bushes, front yards, backyards, we do everything in here. It's a full service account. Dude, so like you would trim those trees? Uh, the trees will be separate. On this one, we only do selective trees. Okay. Um, but on some of our other maintenance accounts, we do all their trees, palms, oaks. Uh, Dang, dude. See, this is this is a different world than what I'm used to. Yeah. And so you were saying like the advantages of this is you guys come out here, focus on the work, doing everything, and you guys only have to bill one person. Correct, so it's one bill. How Do you know how many houses are in this neighborhood? This one I believe is about 450. It's mixed townhomes versus single family, so I think it's about- Is that your truck 200, too? 200. Yeah, we have a production manager there. So we- Dude, this is we wild, bro. We just run guys and you know specialize in quality so you know we have guys on the blower from 8 a.m to 4 o'clock in this account just sweeping it you know really just and you know an eight or nine man mow crew i believe in here and uh a guy starts mowing a guy starts weed whacking a guy starts edging and guys start blowing so what are your hours uh we're typically seven to three or four ish just depends. is that change in the winter and summertime not really okay just depends on the rain you know in the summer yeah we have to adjust a little bit 
This is wild, dude. This is so cool. <laughs> I yeah. can't, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really mind blown, dude. Yeah. Obviously. 21 years old, dude. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm super, I'm pumped for you, dude. This is awesome. Yeah. So, you know, organizations, everything, you know, having the proper racks, you know, we obviously have green touch, uh, you know, five blowers. We normally have three or four weed whackers, three or four edgers. Um, so just tons of equipment and as you can see either neither truck had a single blower in it right now So so guys are, somebody's using a blower. Yeah, they're all blowing mowers are in for the day. So um, huh. We're all blowing to clean up. And get so out this whole neighborhood will be done today uh, This one I'm not sure. I think this one's a two-day mow Okay, uh, but in the winter time we do switch schedules around as we're mowing every other week So we can typically send two got two crews three crews and just bang stuff out in a day Do you guys uh, trim or edge your edges? We use a metal edger on all of them. Okay. Yeah. Is that just faster, you think? Yeah, for us, I think. Had this conversation over the years of, let me take my glasses off, of cash versus financing things. And like I said, I've been friends with you on Facebook for like 10 years. Yeah. And then boom, you're here. And so do you think that financing versus paying cash for things has made you guys blow up faster? Yeah, I mean, I would say right in business, you have to evaluate what your cash is worth. To us, when we're growing, cash is valuable. People don't always pay on time. Yeah. Um, so to us, financing is our way to keep our cash. Some people will still pay cash and get a line of credit. It's a lot harder to do when you're 21 years old. So we've always just financed equipment, saved our cash to front growth. Yeah, so, so you finance trucks and mowers? Trucks, mowers, Stump grinder, chipper, we pretty much all of it. Boarding fuel, mixed gas, they can fill yeah. up the blowers here. Right from the truck, no gas cans. That's awesome. So they actually fill up these tanks at the shop and then if they need gas, they can fill it up right here from the truck. All right, I'm 30 minutes into editing this and I'm gonna cut it off here and we're gonna make a part two. We're gonna go visit the tree trimming crew. And let me just tell you, it's absolutely insane. They've got another crew of 15, 20 guys over there. Uh, so look out for part two. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I appreciate Austin for letting us ask any questions we could and, and tour the facility. If you guys enjoyed, leave me a like, subscribe, and I'll be posting part two here in a couple of days. Thanks for watching. Peace.